My personal sorry, I left Somalia because of fear of persecution. There are people that do not want Somali girls safe in Somalia. So, um, and personally, we, I carry a lot of trauma from Somalia, and a lot of us do. It, just the war gives us trauma to live with for the rest of our lives, and then there's more to add to it. There's terrorism. There is, like, there's a lot of shove and take, right? So we came to Canada seeking a better future. We came to Canada because we wanted to be considered more than, like, take whatever you want from this person. We wanted a place where we can call home and we can have babies and raise our kids without fearing a bomb on their heads when we sleep home. So how do we get here? Paul Denine did touch on it. We do not have uh, a valid passport to travel across the country. So most of us Somalis, we have to deal with agents and smugglers. And that's been a known factor all along for many years since when the war started, right? So like everyone else, I got here by a smuggler. Like everyone else, we all got here by smugglers. So um, it, it tends to be that we cannot travel without travel documents or passports. So the smugglers are the way, they know the system, the people that have been doing this for a living. So they know where to get you, they know how to get it for you, and they know all the stories. All you have to do is provide them with money and you will get where you want to be. Like you will get a place that's safe. They never tell you where they're taking you to begin with. It's always to a safer country. And then they end up bringing you somewhere. And Canada is pretty safe. Um, so I'm gonna touch on the struggle that we go through and how we were able to seek asylum in Canada and you know how we got our papers. Because today the most people who are sitting here with you who are going through this discrimination that we're talking about are actually permanent resident holders. We are people that we, about two years ago, most of us actually um, qualified to apply for citizenship in Canada. And today here we are talking about revocation of our status. Um, we're not new immigrants. We're not people who are saying that we need to be given homes and we need to be given status. We already had status. We were already permanent resident holders. We qualified to be citizenships in Canada. We've been living in Canada from 2012, majority of us. So, um, yeah. So I just want to touch on the Canadian system, refugee system. Most of us seek asylum, you know, inside the country. We, and this is the most hypocrite thing about the career system. When we were seeking asylum in our refugee protection claimants, we mentioned clearly that we used fraudulent passports to gain entry into Canada. Because as you all know, Somali passports don't qualify for you to travel to this side of the country, right? So we accepted that. When they asked us, do you know the nationality of the passport that we used? We told them that it was smugglers that helped us to come in here, and we don't know what they used. And that's actually the truth. That's a fact. Majority of the people who came here, they were 18, 19 years old when we came into this country. You can just imagine 18, 19 years old who went through such a traumatic experience that if we let you know right now, none of you can bear to hear that. You can imagine the mental state they were in when they came into this country at the age of 18, 19, escaping from their family back home and what they've gone through. And you have this person who's telling you, I'm gonna take you to a safe country, but you have one thing to do for me. You don't disclose anything that I use to help you get into Canada. You wanna get into Canada? You wanna get into a safe country? I'm gonna put you right there. But you don't mention anything that I've used. And if you mention, you're gonna go back to where you came from. That's what we were holding on to. We didn't know any better, right? So we come, we tell them, we had the smugglers who brought us in here. They used passports to bring us in here. We know that. Some people, they didn't know the origin of the passport, where it was from. But some people, they didn't know. They had no knowledge where, what, what documents they were being used, what this smuggler used. All we know is that we were on a plane and we landed in Canada, yeah. right? Um, so they accepted us on those grounds. They did accept us on those grounds, actually. That we use fraudulent passports, we don't know where they came from, smugglers brought it in here, we are Somalis. They said, do you have identity documents to prove that you're Somalis? Primary identity documents. Do you have birth certificates? No. Do you have passports? No. But they did accept us. I want you guys to pay attention to that. They did still accept us. 
We used our Somali community to help us, to prove that we're Somalis. They check your language, they check um, the history that you know about Somalia, and that's something that's actually legal in Canada, that you can, Medenta does that. They have a whole forum right there for you. They take an interview of you, they find out how, what you know about your tribe, your people, you, how good your language is and everything. And if you pass that test, they do write for you a letter saying that you are a Somali. It's just that you don't have the identity document. Um, so we got those papers and we go ahead. We have some court hearings. We relay those old stories. And most of us were successful in our cases. We become conventional refugees, right? After that, you are qualified to apply for a permanent resident holders. And these are people who took advantage of the time given to them, who took advantage of the opportunity given to them. Most of these people are educated. The first thing they do is go to school, live that freedom that you've been looking for, you know. Um, have families. Some people are married with kids. Some people, you know, either school or career or something. Like everybody made a life for themselves out of here. Nobody just came here. And, and I don't know. I want to say 99.99% of the people who are affected here, none of them even have any criminal background today. And we've been in this country for a decade plus. Um, we are like professional people. We are educated. We went to school. We came here. We barely knew English. We had to go through ELC, ESL. We had to go through language learning. We had to struggle so much because English is not our first language. And then we had to learn English from the start. I didn't even know how to like really speak that this well fluently. I used to be so scared to speak in English because people will sense my accent. People will laugh at me. When we have school, I wouldn't be comfortable as comfortable to present my presentations or anything because I felt I was less, if that makes sense. But no, I still went through school. I still got myself two degrees, but I'm not enough, right? And we have other people that are in IT and technology, right? We have someone who knows, specializes in robotics. Hell, I know what robot is. I don't know anything about robots, but we're still not enough. We're still not safe people. And then we have families. We're married. We have kids. But no, what they want to do is take our kids away from us. Like, if you have any humanity, and like, I'm sure most of you guys are parents here. You can understand the feeling of someone tell, telling you, I will revoke your statusship. I've been a permanent holder since 2018. 2018. I deserved my like, citizenship a long time ago. But no, they will take our kids away because they're Canadians. We're not. OK, we, maybe we're married to Canadian men. Or maybe we're married to Canadian women, right? They can keep our kids. We're separated from our loved ones. Make that make, that make sense. Right? And how is that not discrimination? How do our kids not deserve the life that we built for them, that we fought so hard for them? How do our kids not deserve the privileged Canadian life? People get this life for no apparent reason just because they're born in this country. I got it because I worked for it. And you're telling me my kid does not deserve to be whatever I want them to be? Anyways, so the hypocrisy is actually that you and Mirasia, you gave us this status ship, you accepted us, you welcomed us, you basically you included, you made us loved, and then all of a sudden you throw the bone at us, you give us this dream life, and you're like, okay, I'm taking it back. No, I am taking it back. I deserve this life because I worked for it. So you're telling me just because I came into the country with a fraudulent passport that you figured out which country it is from now that I mentioned it's actually from whatever country it is from. I just know the passport looked exactly like this. And I'm telling you, it looked like this. It looked blue. OK, how many countries have blue passports? So how am I supposed to know what country it is from? I came here to this country when I was, I didn't even turn 18. I turned 18 when I was here for three months. So how am I supposed, after running away from all those things that I went through, hard scars, scars to, to prove that I went through a lot. I had scars that they took pictures of, that they do still have it, that I still carry with me. And you still tell me, oh no, those scars are nothing.
like anyway so this is the country that actually teaches us you can be whoever you want to be you can be whatever gender you want to be whatever sexuality you want to be well I'm Somali <laughs> if you want me to do uh, ancestry DNA kits that they normally do to prove that I'm 100% Somali and you know what's the most surprising thing guys it is that we have a new embassy in Canada right now that's starting off right now we still went to those people we asked them to help us prove that we're Canadians I mean we're Somalis they went, they applied the papers for us. They sometimes, for me personally, I traveled outside Canada. I went to a country that has an embassy of Somalia. And then I went there, I sat with the embassy people, told them my story, told them everything that they need to know about Somalia, did interviews, everything, did a paper test for her whole sake. And I still got my passport that they needed. They wanted Somali passport? Well, I have it. You wanted Somali birth certificate? I have it. You want my family's background? Well, everyone here can testify for me. I have people that are from my tribe. Somalis, we're good with tribes, right? <laughs> so you want to know where I come from? Yeah. We have Ed Habari and everyone that's from Maccabeel coming through. So what do you want? Like, what else can I do for you? What else can I do to prove that I deserve my career, I deserve my education, and I do deserve the family that I'm building here, and I do deserve to be with my loved ones. And that's it.